Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another 12-12 battle and the difference is in this one is part of a tournament that I hosted a long, well not a long time ago, about two weeks ago and uh, well if you're in the Discord then you know who the victors are so if you want to be involved in more of these tournaments and know about the extra stuff that goes on on the uh, behind the scenes then do join the Discord, it's in the link down below um, and we're starting off with a excellent 2v2 uh, battle we have Castile and Trier fighting the Seljuks and Norway and uh, we've got Trier sending in his carry straight away against the Seljuks um, got some pretty nasty charges going on here I mean that's not gonna be a nasty charge at all but um but yeah they're now getting mopped up it's a bit of a risk since cavalry is a pre pretty rare uh, resource in this uh, in this tournament you can only bring three including your general not including your general uh, you can, uh, along with three shock infantry, uh, four range, and two hybrid units, uh, which is just like a sword or a uh, and an archer unit, like they're combined almost. So it's a very OP thing, um, and two pikes or halberds, and uh, and four of any unit uh, is another thing. So you can can't spam units out, uh, and you can only play a faction once. Uh, in the tournament entirely, so whoever you choose, you've got to be make sure you've got uh, plenty of other options lined up if you get through that, that round. And we have Trier going in, taking out uh, the Seljuker Rum right now, and he's looking like he's doing okay. I mean, he's lost his cavalry though, he needs to be careful. We've got now the Spanish cavalry coming in here to help clear this up. It's a bold, bold. Uh, I mean, things, I mean, Spain sending his cavalry over is pretty bold. He's got to do it, though. He's now outnumbered on his flank, but they need cavalry and mobility on this flank now because the soldiers have just mopped up Trier's. So we're, uh... So yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Now they're just going to surround this uh, unit of uh, dismounted elected guards. It's just sitting here on its own, doing its own thing. So that's a bit of a shame. So, uh, yeah, now we've got Norway coming forward and, uh... Yeah, this is a uh, this is gonna be a a, in, a uh, scary line. We'll call it. I don't know why it took me hard to say that. I was trying to think of imposing. That's the word I was thinking of. Why could I not think of the word imposing? Who knows? Probably has something to do with this being the third attempt at trying to record um, these, like the highlights of this tournament. I'm like showing off three battles, and uh, basically the first time, uh, my recording software just basically was like, nope, that's it. We're stopping there. So I was like, great. Uh, I think it was like something about memory, so we basically fiddle around, got rid of all like the unnecessary crap. And then, uh, second one, uh, good old Pope here forgot to do any recording, so we got all the way to the end, and I realized I hadn't recorded anything. So here we go, a third attempt, third time, th third the lucky charm, or isn't it? Uh, but we've got a charge in here, we've got Tableman going in, they're gonna try and get some of these Pavi's crossbows, they actually are gonna get some, but now they're facing a nice long line of Trier Spears. These table men aren't truly table men though because they are not battling with their tables. Uh, I'm sure there's a good reason why they're called table men but I I have no idea what it is. My uh, Norwegian history is not up to scratch in comparison. But we have a fight over here. We have uh, the general for Trier now charging in. We've got the archbishop himself. An angry bishop man. Where is he? Where is Where's the angry bishop man? That is him. Look at him. He's only got a staff. Bless him. He's getting charged now by Balkan nobles, and there he is. Look at him, just still chilling there with his uh, staff. But yeah, I don't know why the uh, the soldiers have Balkan nobles. They really shouldn't. Uh, like, well, because they didn't get to the Balkans. It's very much an Ottoman unit that they've just shoehorned into the soldiers as well. Uh, unless I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the soldiers never got to Europe. They got as far as like Asia Minor, which I'm. Last time I checked, it's not the Balkans. And um, over on this side, we have a good charge. Uh, it looks like the Spanish or Castile got off the uh, charge on these uh, Norwegian cavalry, which is so chevroned up, such a waste of chevrons. When he never got the charge in there, he's now got spears that are going into support. Um, but he really, is, I mean, thing is though, he's got the charge off, but then he's not supported with infantry till really late. These foot raiders are probably going to help turn the battle around. These shock infantry. Do some nasty work with their big axes. Got a bit of a flank going on here by uh, Norway as well. Flanking on round, we've got some uh, pikemen now coming to support. I'm going to do a, a bit of a fast forward. 
Um, just because I don't want to keep this video too long. Uh, it looks like the Archbishop, Archbishop did die, but also now the Seljuk General also dead. So that is a big, big win for uh, Trier. So both these sides are basically beating each other up. Uh, and could it go either way, like a general, losing a general in 12-12, very unpredictable what could happen next. But uh, yeah, it does look like it's going to be a huge front line uh, engagement here between Denmark. Um, Denmark, it's not Denmark at all, it's uh, Norway. I don't know why I keep saying that. I said it in the last time I did this, it's Denmark. They're not Denmark at all. Norway. But yeah, Norway and Castile, or Spain as I may accidentally call them occasionally, because they are the true Spain. Um, Footrid over here now routing uh, Spanish uh, Order Knights, and uh, it looks like the general over here is doing okay. He's going to rout, probably. This cavalry with the help of the spears. The spears really need to get in here and help. Uh, not that they did much help the first time. But hey, it's a thought that matters. Uh, Trier looked like he's still having a bit of a rough time. His shock infantry here just broke against uh, the uh, infantry of the Seljuks. Got dismounted elected guards here. They're holding the lines. I mean, the only problem is now that is uh, Trier has got no cavalry, but the Seljuks do have cavalry. They are trying to focus it down with uh, Pavis, and they are slowly wavering it. They are actually going to break that one. If they can focus this down with a volley, this one might be uh, might be enough to scare them off. Oh, yeah, they just stood there. That was a big mistake by the Seljuks. They need to keep that cavalry moving. Uh, this cavalry could just get one nice charge off, could route all of that Spanish line. Not route it all, but certainly do a lot of damage. Um... But yeah, like, look at this. Trier and um, the soldiers beating each other into the ground. It's really going to come down to... Uh, really going to come down to probably uh, Spain and uh, Den uh, Norway. Gosh, not Denmark at all. Here we go. Good charge by the Seljuks. Charging and getting those pikes. That's a good attack there. Those pikes are going to be in a bit of trouble. But I don't think that cavalry is going to last much longer. It's so beaten up. Oh, the pikes are going to break, though. Yeah, the, that carries getting focused down, and then it goes routed. But it did its job. It routed its pikes, and it's allowed these uh, Norwegians to get through. I had to try so hard there not to say Danish. Um, but yeah, we're going to fast do a little bit more of a fast forward, just keep it going. We can still really see what's going on. It's just a long grind at the moment. All right, so it looks like uh, we've got the foot rider going in to help the cavalry here. And they've got the pikes. They need to come up and help support. Get the pikes in here. Stop pokey pokeying. Our men are breaking up. Lots of men breaking off and dying. It would seem Trier is having a rough time over there. There we go. We've got Trier. Looks like he's sort of solidified a bit. He's now got a sort of a line going on. His, these Pavis are going to do some great work for him. They surely, like, they've got so much ammo left. And there's so many units that are vulnerable. Like these shock infantry, these pikes. Excellent. They like any of these are going to be really good targets to take out. He's got pikes of his own left. He needs to keep them alive. But yeah, I mean, look at uh, Castile. He's in a real issue. Look, zoom out. Look at that crescent. I can't really see. From, you can't really see from that angle. Um, that crescent. Look at that. It's like. I mean, it's only going to get worse as well. The men are running. Stand and fight. And they're losing now. Bless them. They look so like uh, Jerusalem's Templars. That's why I love this them so much. They're looking amazing with the temple, the Templars, the Templar look. But they are surrounding, and they're going to route the spear unit as well as uh, the Norwegians. They won't hold long. Wavering already. The general's still alive over here. How he survived, I have no idea. He was like getting attacked by Furrida so much. That is really unfortunate that that cavalry just broke all of a sudden there. That 22 of them that broke just then, that must be infuriating for the uh, Norwegian player. And here we go, it's kind of looking like... Uh, I'm going to say Trier might just about clinch it against... Um, against the Seljuks. Well, I know, it's the third attempt for me watching this. I know what happens. Um, so I think... So I can't really say. And I don't know. I don't know with uh, Nor Norway. The general in here, though. Let's let's have a look at him. Let's find the king. There he is. 
The King of Norway. Oh, yeah, I got that right that time. Just chilling with his big axe. Need to kill him. He's running. He's just running through this spear unit. He's just happy losing some men. They're rallying all the uh, shock infantry up there. That's a big win. And yeah, you can see the Seljuks are running low now. Running real low. L losing that cavalry was a big... Uh, big minus, really. They're the only cavalry left on this flank. They did so well nullifying everyone else's. And here we go. It's just coming down to really just... Uh, like the pikes here. They're doing such a good job. Pikes and these Treyarch spears. The big pavy shields. On this side, I mean, that's kind of wrapped up. These uh, shock units are so small, they won't do any damage. Just going to fast forward again. This one is by far and away the longest of the, the battles, but I mean, it is also one of the most epic, I think. There you go, look at that. Sling is beating shock infantry in combat. You don't see that every day. Might happen again here. Take them out, Slingers. Yeah. You take so much, like, hate most of the time from most people. Like, ugh, Slingers, you're not even archers. But, I mean, this Slinger, you should really go out and take out those uh, foot ridder. They route everything so much quicker. And here we go. It looks like, yeah, that's it, really. Trier has done a good job in just mopping up soldiers. They've all they've got left is these Mercy Genoese. Look at these Genoese just whoring themselves up to whoever for the money, even if it's enemies of Christendom. How dare they? How dare they? Um, we've got sword units coming over here. This general just needs to stay alive. He's wavering all the time, though. If he's got rally ability, he really needs to pop that right now. But yeah, these crossbows are... I mean, they're actually going to fall back. Let this crossbow unit just take the brunt. Bit of a brave thing to do. And these archers here are focusing on that pike unit. It's a good unit to take out. Here we go. The final clash. And it looks like... Uh, well, not the final clash, really. There's a, there's a few more clashes to come. But those crossbows are probably going to die. They're now focusing down these swords here. These poor tablemen. All they want to do is make their tables. Make their table. Look at this guy. He's a giant, that one there. That guy's a giant. Giant amongst men. Um, yeah, here come like the swords and everything like that. That's going to be nasty. Uh, fast forward a little bit more. Just get through this one. Pikes are holding the line here. They're actually winning this fight against the uh, swords. But they're going to get surrounded by more swords and pikes. Landvern pikes coming up. Chasing down the slingers now. Got to do something with this general. He keeps uh, being a bit indecisive. Send him in. There you go, the pikes have been surrounding. That's them, that's them going. Good night, Vienna, pikes. Uh, Pavis over here doing a really good job. In combat, Pavis are okay. Certainly in flanking. I mean, at this stage of the battle as well, they're going to be pretty huge. Uh, you need every man you can get at this point. Like, it's so close in numbers. About 200 man difference. And only that cavalry. If they get that cavalry, then uh, I'd say that's, that's it. The... Uh, Trier and Spain have gone, but they can surround these uh, units, and that's a really good job. I mean, they're just they're routing just with the threat of the cavalry behind. They're routing, but here we go. Spikes going in, and that's them gone. It's just basically done some slingers over here, which I don't know what they're doing, and a lot of Trier's troops, which could break at any moment. Because Trier's general died a long, long time ago. And these units must be exhausted. They're very tired. Actually, there's a mix. A lot of very tired, some active. We've got uh, spears over here. They can actually catch those Genoese and tell them what's what for cheating and uh, not supporting Christendom. But here we go. We've got some nice volleys going off here. A volley. A volley into these... Uh, these boys. No, we're going to have a charge. Very well. Uh, I don't know who win that, actually. These swords are obviously better in combat. I don't know. I don't know. They're wavering as they get there, though. Most of these units. They're in real trouble. Oh, they 
Wow, the Pavis are gonna win that fight. I mean, they are more active, exhausted. Yeah, they're just so tired. Tiredness. I mean, this general needs to just go around and just charge into uh, the foot rear of guard. They'll do a good job. Yeah, there's not much they can do though. So we're just gonna fast forward up to the end. We're gonna see a charge in here. Slinger's taking out uh, pikes now. You don't often see that either. These slingers have been the MVPs of the game, I'm gonna say. And there we go. Got routing going on constantly here, and there we go. A final last ditch charge from the general to mop up what is the foot ridder and the last hope of Norway. And apparently the Tide of Battle is just turning in their favour now. And there you go. The king is not dead. He's just running away. What a coward. So well played to Azarian, Fox, Frozen Man, and Heroes of the Greeks, and Joesman. Uh, there are their end results. There's Triers. There is Castiles. There is uh, Norway's. And there is Seljuk of Rum. And now I will move on to the second battle of these, of these highlights. So we're here with the second battle between Georgia, the Teutonic Order... Portugal and the Empire of Epirus and look at that charge to start us off from Portugal into Georgia. I mean Georgia one of my favorite factions. It's good to see them on the battlefield. Uh, Epirus seemed to be a tournament favorite to be coming out. I mean this Epirus guard here could, with missile capability a good strong unit. Portugal also quite uh, sorry about that strangely a, uh, a favorite as well. I mean we've got some good charges here though by the Tazruli. Getting in behind, getting these uh, levy slingers. We've then got uh, the Portuguese nobles over here. But, uh, fighting the Tazruli. I'm going to say the Tazruli probably will win that. Maybe because they're a lot more stronger. And also you can see, like, look at these dismounted Monaps. So firing all the way back here. Um, these spears need to hurry up and get into the battle. Um, also, like, Portugal's, like, just letting his cavalry die in, over here. Surround this, uh, this cavalry. You could just mop it up and get on with the next attack. Um... But yeah, this infantry needs to engage, get further up, start supporting as well. But I mean, both sides kind of just were very risky with their cavalry. Taz really is just like going deep into the enemy lines. On this far side, uh, the Teutonic Order is now engaging the Epirus. I mean, he spent a lot of money, you can imagine, on this rear brooder here. So it'll be interesting to see whether this rear brooder has enough to break through this, uh, the uh, Dania Toy or whatever they call it, this, like Diane Toy or something like that. We've got Empress Bodyguard in here as well. Where are they? What are they called? Diane Natoy? I, I have no idea. But, I mean, if the Grandmaster Bodyguard here is just trying to charge into the Empress Bodyguard constantly, not a bad idea. Um, but it's going to be really about the infantry, I think, on this side. Like, it's whether the Teutonic Order can hold off long enough with his pretty awful infantry. Like, their infantry is nothing to be, like, amazed by. If they can do that, then... Uh, and a whole like back this really elite infantry to then win with a cav, that would be great. Um, this infantry I think should have gone into the spear here. I mean it's actually wavering anyway. But uh, you might want to do that to just turn around and do something else there. Um, George's cavalry certainly getting mops up over here. I'm not, not actually quite sure where the other one is. Oh it's here, here it is. Um, Portugal source resorting out his lines. We could have a charge in here into these uh, Tazruli swords. We've got more uh, more Spanish Order Foot Knights. Even though we're not in uh, Spain, we still have them. We've also got Slingers again, uh, which is clearly they're a favorite from the Iberian factions. And they're focusing down. Look at that. They're all hitting all the way back there at those cavalry. They've got an arm on them. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We've got a good push here as well by Georgia, really pushing hard on this left flank. Um, he needs to kind of just bring this unit further around. He can really... Uh, Scare those levy spears off. This Tazruli as well needs to keep pushing hard. Get these slingers out off the battlefield. Um, we've got a swordsman unit here. That's uh, not... Well, that's going into the front line. That could really go around and help. These spears need to go and engage these uh, slingers. Just get them in there. Kill these slingers off. They're really damaging the cavalry. The cavalry at the back here is now broken. Excellent. The general here, though, for Georgia is break... Uh, not breaking. He's losing, actually. But he's, having, he's in combat against some Sp uh, Portuguese nobles. Interesting to see where they can win that. We now have uh, the Teutonic Order. He's having, I'd say, a few issues. Actually, no, that's not him. That's Epirus Guard. I don't know. I'm going to say that... Oh, 
I think uh, the Teutonic Order lost the Rear Brooder here. So they're down a cavalry unit. I mean, it's not like uh, Epris didn't come out of that also pretty badly. That and unit's unit basically gone. But we've got Rear Brooder here fighting against uh, the Emperor's Bodyguard. They need to get any units that possibly can with Missile capability. Focus this unit down. Break Epris' uh, general. There you go, the Rear Brooder's gone again. And they're really losing on this flank is uh, the Teutonic Order. They've got so much Halbruder here that needs to get like charging in. Over on this side, uh, I don't know who's winning. It's quite close. I'd say uh, well, George is looking like he's losing on a lot of these a lot of these fights. Um, but he's got a big flank coming on around here, which could change the uh, tide of the battle. He's just got to hold all this losing infantry. And if his general doesn't die, then we're okay. And as I say that, his general shatters. So uh, that's brilliant. George could be in for a rough time of it now. I'm not even sure how. Like, he's got so much more stuff in here. Like, this one unit of Epris guys surely wasn't enough to, like, change the battle. Like, there's Manapsas in here. There's, uh, Tazrili Swords in here. Surely that wasn't enough to just change it. But we've got, a uh, Portugal's general back here now just routing archers. A good target to go for. So I'd say, uh, I think Portugal's beaten Georgia on this side, I think. Uh, so I'm going to just quickly fast forward this one because I think... We've got an, uh, quite a, a quick victory. It was actually quite close for quite a long time. And then both the generals for uh, both sides broke. You can see the Grand Masters broke here. And uh, the Tazruli, or not the Tazruli, Monapsa Guard here just running off into the sunset. So yeah, we'll just fast forward. We'll see how this one goes. See the last stand of these units. I always like this unit. I don't often see it. The Halbruder Heavy Axeman. It's only tier 2 sadly. So it won't match to most of this tier 3 stuff, but a very cool unit. Just look like lumberjacks a bit. Chopping down wood, or in this case, people's heads. Got a nice charge in here from the Diana toy into the rear. They're going to break these uh, spears. And then uh, the Halberd Heavy Axemen are next. But you can see they're just moving most of their force over here. If Georgia is ever going to win this, he's now got Epirus to contend with. So yeah, that is, that's kind of it. That is going to be the uh, final stage of this battle. And you can see George is just breaking. He's got these poor, like, light spears left. The unit is running from the enemy. And there we go. Oh, they're actually going to route uh, Portugal's general. There you go. The Portuguese general has died. Look, that's so unfortunate that they died there right at the end. Uh, and a period of victory for um, Epirus. That's, again, it is a close, it is a fairly close one. Um, so well played to Scorpio and uh, Dickstream knocking out uh, Smokey and Wizlet. Um So yeah, there are their end results. You can have a look at them. And then there is Smokey's with Georgia. And there is Wizlet's with the Teutonic Order. So if you, I hope you guys enjoyed that one as well. And we will move on to the third and final battle of... Uh, this highlights reel. So we are here with the third and final battle, which is the final itself. And we have a charge there from Flanders into the Grand Duchy of Kiev. Uh, that was a pretty brave charge in the air. They charged straight in a spear wall. They're trying to get these dismounted Devore. And they've done it over here. This is a more successful one. Uh, certainly going for these... Uh, well, these are the uh, Skutoy Swordsmen. So we have the Empire of Nicaea and we have uh, Kiev. Basting out against Portugal again, and we have Flanders. And I always love that uh, Flanders has these wacky units. Uh, they have like Brewers Guild Falconeers, and they've got like um, Fishmongers Guild Swordsmen. And just like, no one else want to fight for Flanders or something? Just so they're going to have to get all their Fishmongers out and all their Brewers to come and fight for them. Apparently, Flanders just, no one wants to fight for Flanders, so it must just be everyone, all the occupants, all the citizens. So uh, that's, they're always funny. So hopefully they do well in this battle is all I'm going to say. Hopefully they do well. So I'm just going to quickly fast forward until they uh, get into a closer range. They are just having a skirmish phase right now. Got um, This dismounted Devore is a hybrid unit. So it's like, this is the example that you can only bring two of these units. So they're pretty good in melee as well. They've brought uh, some Javis to make up their complement of uh, archers or range units, that's to say. 
should say. Um, this is pretty concerning for um, Flanders and Portugal. They're certainly like flanking around heavily. And they've decided to combine their armies together. While uh, Rus, uh, not Rus, Kiev, sorry, and, uh, and Nicaea are flanking around and stretching their army out really thin. So whether Flanders and Portugal can punch through these thin lines and win, uh, we'll have to see. Or will it be like this encirclement be the reason why this uh, battle is won? But here we go. So we've got a charge of infantry coming in by looks of it. We've got some dismounted Count's retinue about to charge in. Chopping them down. Uh, probably take a lot of lives, but they should eventually break through that uh, spear line. They are in sport spear formation, so that's very good for them. Italian mercenaries now bulking them up, so they've got halberdiers in here, ready to keep them at bay. That's also very good. We've got loads of archers firing. Look like they're going to try and take out the slingers over here. I've just realised every battle we've had, we've got slingers in. Though, literally most battles I ever compete in myself, I never see a slinger on the battle. Probably because most people don't come to the Iberians. But uh, yeah, it was interesting to see. We've got, look at this. The fishmongers and the uh, brewers are ready. They're ready to go in. Excellent. It's great to see what they can do. Look at that, these Peltasts just arcing their like shots over. Hitting like anything this in is a huge blob forming here. Look at this spear line as oh the shield wall as well. This insane. It's almost something like I was throwing to Britannia. You see the huge spear like spear walls and that. Or shield wall, sorry sorry. Another shield wall here. Look at this. Excellent. Through the flower fields. And then we've got cavalry out here. This is a big problem for the uh Portuguese and for the Flemish. This is a big flank going on. All the shock infantry, all their cavalry. And I'm just, I was just thinking, have they spammed out a unit? But they've actually brought a lot of high. They brought some late as well. So they, technically they haven't spammed out the unit. Because it's the late version and the high version. It's very clever. Um... But it keeps to the rules. I was just checking that. I was just thinking, ha, have they broken the rules there? In the final of all places to break it, but no, they haven't. Very clever. But the Flanders is slowly breaking through. I'm going to say it's a lot of blood on a lot of his Count Renew units. And now we've got some uh, Axemen going in here to fight some of these uh, Foot Militia. Foot Militia are a good unit, though. They'll hold the line. And we'll, oh, look at these guys. They've got little, uh, like, missile units. What are these? These are just swordsmen from Portugal. Um, I didn't realize they had, like, missile capabilities. So they can throw, like, a small, like, dart. That's very cool. But this is concerning. So they've got cavalry on the inside here, and they're routing. Uh, by the looks of it, some uh, Scutiori swords. Oh, no, this is um, Flanders' is cavalry. Okay. Yes, the cavalry for... Uh, I see it's still all the way out here. This is going to be a concern. They've got, because it's all their shock infantry is all, all the way committed over there as well. Like, they, the shock infantry can just mess up this cavalry if it wanted to. But this is a, a big hole in the line here now. We've now got a general emperor's bodyguard inside. We've got nice here, the true, the true heirs to the Byzantine Empire. Here to, uh, Stake their claim strangely on Flanders. I think there was actually Flanders or like some like counts of like Flanders or Brabant were at like the cru fourth crusade. So that kind of makes sense. Why Portugal's here? No, no one knows. But yeah, we've got shock infantry now just fighting on this tiny Spanish order foot knights like flank. The Spanish order foot knights, another unit that's been in all three battles. I've just realised. Uh, now we've got a big flank going on around here. Anglo of Ranjoy. Got some levy spears in here. Holding. They're not going to hold the line against these Anglo of Ranjoy. I like the thought, Portugal, but it won't be enough. Look at these spears. They haven't even got a shield. They're just holding like a pole. 
Actually, no, there is actually a generally a spear, but hardly. Uh, and then we've got the swordsman breaking here, so this is a big gap again. It's unformed. They're getting so encircled. Look at this. They're being encircled. Need to get all these uh, Scutoy uh, swordsmen in here, though. Actually, get them in combat. Some of these aren't even in combat. But it's okay. Flanders is going to be just fine. The fishmongers are in combat. These guys will hold forever. As long as there's fish in the sea, the fishmongers will hold. Where are the brewers? The brewers are coming up as well. More brewers over here. Well, I don't know. They might need these units elsewhere. I know they need reserves probably because these units are going to break. Uh, eventually because there's so many units in here. But like, they might need to send swords and stuff over here. Like, this is a huge problem. And they're using fire as now. The dismantled Devore just trying to bring down their morale. Really good play. You do need to. Th those brewers, they do be OP. So, I mean, you need every bit of a bonus you can. If that means uh, scaring them with some fiery some fiery arrows. But yeah, look at this. This is huge breaking. You just got Peltas breaking through. Got Swords of St. Michael coming in. Can they hold? That is the question. I, it's not looking good so far. Balance power, I say, ever so slightly in favor of uh, Nicaea and uh, Kiev. But I've seen uh, stranger things happen. They just need to get some of this stuff back. And they can surround some of these generals. Like this general over here, Kiev's general. Get him. That's a big win. Look at this mess of cavalry fight. Like, there's so much cavalry in here. Cavalry fights are never that fun to watch. How is this Levy Spearman unit still holding against Anglo Vranjoy? This is supposed to be Vranjin Guard, the best of the best. And some farmers were holding up until, until like, the Emperor, Emperor himself arrived and come, said, Come on, guys. We can do better than that. My own bodyguard can't break through some farmers. Came and did it himself. Um, but yeah, I mean, the general's bodyguard now is going after uh, some slingers. So these guys are going to feel the pain. Yeah, the screams of slingers. They're exhausted though. He's just, oh, actually, they're active. There's a very slow charge. I won't lie. I mean, they've got lots of Anglo over Android now ready. They could uh, send them into these uh, halberdiers. That's a good unit to have. Uh, still in reserve for uh, Portugal and Flanders. But yeah, look at this. He's Count Renu. They like charged in so early on and then they just overwhelmed them with uh, infantry. Did Kiev. He's just kept so many men in here and just set his archers through the work and just shooting over into the backs. All this. And it's just such a huge blob here as well. Like these, this man divorced in the out of ammo, but I wonder how many kills they've got in here. But the fishmongers are back. So that's an instant win for Flanders. Those fishmongers, they are OP. Slapping them with their fish. We've got Halberdiers now just defending this flank. They're that worried about just being surrounded fully. But here they come. The Emperor's bodyguard just charged in anyway. The Halberdiers kind of just redeployed. It was just enough. Oh no, it's not even... It's uh, Kievan nobles. Where is the Emperor's bodyguard? Oh, he's all the way over here, surrounding another gen another cav unit. This cav's been fighting here since the very beginning. It's only just starting to lose men. Portuguese nobles. Jeez. They're a strong unit. They are literally all clad in armor, in fairness. Literally every single one of them clad in, like, full plate armor. But yeah, I'm going to say that, I mean, looking at Balance Power now, I think that is it. I think the victory and the uh, tournament is going to go to Nicaea and Kiev. So well done to them. We'll just fast forward now a little bit. But I mean, the brewers and the fishmongers, they're, they're still in there. I'm just going to say. I do love those brewers and fishmongers. They, they do do their bit. Flanders definitely gets the award for having some of the wackiest units.
There you go, the Smurd Infantry holding on. And I think that is going to be it, yeah. 25 seconds left on the game, and I can't see any way that uh, Flanders is getting out of that one. And there you go, yeah, they've just been... They've been fighting so long in combat as his cavalry. It was a big risk to pull it out because you might lose your general, but leaving it in here is just... Its effect's gone. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're all breaking. And there you go. A perfect victory for uh, TZN and Canary who are playing as Kiev and Nicaea. So, there are their end results. So, I'd just like to say well done to uh, TZN and Canary for uh, getting to the final and winning. And well done to Scorpio and Dickstream Man as well for also uh, getting to the final and... Uh, well, coming second. They uh, they got their rewards as well for coming second, so well done to them. Okay, there are the results for Nicaea, and there are the results for Kiev. He did very well with his archers and his cav. And there are the results for Flanders. Uh, his foot militia did actually very well, surprisingly. And there are the results for Portugal as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, looking at the highlights of this 12-12 AD uh, tournament. There will be more tournaments to come, so do make sure you join the Discord, which is in the link down below. Um, always welcome to new people and we always uh, try and uh, get you involved in as many battles as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and a comment to show your support. And until next time, Legionnaires,